We are welcoming all the beer fans all over the world to the beer fans television. Today's date is turned of May 2024, and we are still bringing a very urgent information to every each of you coming across our broadcast right now. We want all of you to pay a very good attention because the Prime Minister is back again to address the Biafra Republic all over the world right now. And as we are coming across these hot information, we want to, to begin to drop your experience and share it. The more we are sharing, the more all the Biafra all over the world will participate in, in this ongoing project of the Biafra Republic in exile and uh, we wish our prime minister good luck we wish him a uh, power consistent effort consistent strength to pass the declarations of Biafra soon and soonest and all we need from you is your sharing and your prayer for the prime minister of the Biafra republic government in exile yeah. and the end of nigeria have begun when Mazenam Bikano was preaching, he said, Somali will be better than Nigeria. <laughs> Are you not seeing it? The good news is that at the end, freedom will come. And the West continue to make mistake of allowing us in Africa to carry gun before they're listening to us. The mistake we have done in Sudan, in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, in many places something that we can resolve amicably ordinary asking for freedom is a problem the people you will kill you for asking for your freedom and if you don't defend yourself your history will be gone will be wiped away from the surface of the earth mm -hmm. and today we will not be wiped away by nigeria because we have come to end it our forefathers paid the heaviest price of being in Nigeria, and we are not going to leave that particular price for our children unborn to pay. We will end it in this generation. So from the 2nd of December, the music will change. Nigeria we don't Nigeria don't know what is coming. We will show them that the people you killed in the 60s, we have never forgotten them. The scars is very fresh. The humiliation on our children. They were, they were dying and they saw all those stomach being swelled up and they were dying in thousands on daily basis, mm -hmm. up to three million. Nigeria is evil and must end. The only way to end it is when they come with AK-47, you bring your, your own AK-47. When they come with bomb, you bring your own bomb. Mm -hmm. It is fire for fire, gun mm -hmm. for gun, until the world will listen to us. Mm -hmm. And that listening to us, they have ignored us for many years. Mm -hmm. This year will be the day, the, the, the year mm -hmm. that the Biafra and our own cry will ring a bell mm -hmm. to the highest level. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Biafrans in UK. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, my lord. They were, um. Uh, let me promise one thing. You know, any place I go, I always promise. And I want to fulfill that promise whenever. So, the promise I'm making to the United Kingdom today, Biafra in the United Kingdom, is that when I was in the U.S. a few weeks ago, last week, I promised them that uh, the satellite radio and all that will be, and the TV will be uh, on air. And today we have the satellite TV, we have the satellite radio, and what i promise and what i'm still promising here is that we will start now we have tested the radio and it is working in a bony state we are going to start from the uh coastal uh biafra to the hinterland we already have some transmitters in the hinterland so aquai bomb state the former aquai bomb state in the next two weeks we will have voice of biafra satellite radio all over aquai bomb that's my promise in the next two weeks we are going to have them in a quiet bomb and from there spread to Ugocha, spread to Bayosa, spread to all the coastal delta before we come to the hinterland. That is the promise I'm making to you. But it starts in the next two weeks from today. Thank you. There you Thank you, sir. Oh, but 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 oh,
Kede. <laughs> uh, Mazi Boniface, please. Uh, ben Fuchs hand has been off for a long time. Do attempt to him, please. Yeah, um, uh, we have, there is time for, um, um, for donations. But uh, we have, we are following the program. Um, Mazi Ben Chus, don't worry, you will usher your own um, submission. But, but we have a presentation. Okay, we have a presentation we want to present. Yeah, please, after the presentation, you can go ahead. Please, sir. There you um, My uh, wonderful family, UK family, I recognize everybody here. Those in the cabinet, um, PM's cabinet, we recognize all of you. Uh, you are all supportive in UK. Everything that will make UK to be moving forward, you are always gathered around to see that it is being done and on time. I recognize all of you present here. They will know. So please, I may not go one by one to recognize all of you, but I recognize your presence in this meeting. When the time comes, we shall be omitted for you to um, take your own submission. But we have a presentation now, we are following our program. We have a presentation we want to present. Our, um, we have um, a teenager here in UK, it's very intelligent. The other day, he went to, he, he made a presentation in one of the Igbo unions. So we said, no, um, well, he must come here and do this presentation, another presentation concerning the Diaphragm War and its uh, importance today. I'm calling on Ben Obodefuna. Ben, if you are here, you can raise your hand. A very brilliant. He's a very good Bitcoin in guru. He's very good in a guru in Bitcoin. Even in this, our um, uh, USDT, he's very good. He mm. teaches people around him um, the, how to transact, how to trade with the USDT. So he's a very good guy and a, a teenager, very brilliant. Yeah, from a mother. So then, my minister, you can see Ben so that he can. Come your camera and unmute yourself. Hello, hello. Um, greetings, Prime Minister, and greetings, fellow dear friend. Um, on your Ben, can you on your camera, please? Um. Since I'm on the 18, um, I just I prefer to keep my camera off for privacy reasons. Uh, that's okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, Afambo Nze Chinedu Obadevna, and today I'll be presenting um, five interesting facts about um, the Biafran War. So I'd like to screen, like share my screen so somebody could give me post permission so I could. Okay. Um, Can I give a co-host, please? COS, please. Uh, Grant co-host. COS, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, what's his name, uh, please? Ben's iPad. Ben's iPad. Okay. Ben's iPad. Okay, great. All right, done. Ben, you can go ahead. Um, okay. So. Can you uh, see my screen? Uh, ben, before you continue, please, I hope um, none of your content has any gory images, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's no gory images. All right, right on. Can you see, uh, um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. Uh, uh, okay. so the uh, Biafran War. Quick overview. Um, the Biafran War, also known as the Nigerian Civil War, took place between 1967 and 1970 due to ethnic and political divisions between Nigeria's Igbo dominated Southeast and the Hausa Fulani-led North. Colonel 
Odemegu Ojuku, led Biafra to declare independence in 1967, which led to a military intervention by the Nigerian government, headed by General Yakubu Gowon. The conflict included intense battles, human rights violations, and a severe humanitarian crisis, with an estimated one to three million deaths from famine and disease. Despite initial successes by Biafra, the Nigerian led and the Nigerian military, sorry, backed by international support from countries like Britain and the Soviet Union, eventually were victorious. The war concluded in 1970 with Biafra's capitulation and its reintegration into Nigeria, significantly shaping the nation's political and ethnic dynamics of today. So, an introduction. One of the unique things about Biafra in the history of warfare is that not only was Biafra fighting a war, but simultaneously Biafra was also building the nation state, which includes fully functioning institutions such as the Central Bank of Biafra, University of Biafra, ministries and law courts. For example, people were still going to court for petty cases and receiving punishments, or getting married in a church as a normal society would whilst fighting the war. This is what makes Biafra unique, and things like this are what should be celebrated in history. So, number one, the post-war £20 policy. So, at the end of the war, a Nigerian panel concluded that every Igbo person who had an account in any Nigerian bank before the Civil War was to receive £20. At the beginning of the Civil War, Igbo people took their money out of Nigerian banks and changed it to the bank, um, to the Biafran currency. After the war, the Nigerian government took control of bank accounts belonging to Biafrans. A Nigerian committee decided to give each Igbo person a new bank account with just £20 in it. This meant that there were more millionaires who were stripped of all their money and forced to rebuild off of a mere £20. Despite this though, the eastern region still grew to become bigger than most of the other regions of Nigeria today, despite the harsh conditions they were forced to build their economy back up from. But what many people don't know is that is what happened to the money that was stripped from the Biafrans. In 1972, two years after the war concluded, the Nigerian government released the um, indigenization decree, which mandated all foreign all foreign, especially British companies, to be either fully or partly owned by Nigerians. A decree that the Igbos did not benefit from, and it's believed that the money used to finance the purchase of these private interests was on the other side of that £20. Number two, Biafra's crude oil refineries. During the Biafran War, faced with, e uh, faced with an economic blockade limiting the access to petroleum products, products. Um, the Biafrans ingen ingeniously established makeshift crude oil refineries. Leveraging local expertise and traditional refining methods for palm oil, they improvised equipment using available ma uh, materials like old barrel and pipes. This community-driven effort, coupled with training initiatives, enabled them to produce sufficient refined petroleum products to sustain their economy and military operations throughout the conflict. This technology the Biafra has created is still being used by the likes of the Russians today. Number three, the hijacking of planes. During the Biafra war, Biafra militants hijacked four planes, including two Nigerian Airways planes and two BOAC, which is the British Overseas Airways Corporation planes. On July 10th, 1968, diverting them to the uh, Ulai airstrip in Biafra. This dramatic act was an attempt to draw international attention to the plight of the Biafran people and the humanitarian crisis caused by the Nigerian government's blockade and military offence. While the passengers and the crew were released unharmed, the hijacking was widely condemned by the international community, including the Nigerian and British governments as an act of terrorism and a violation of international law. Despite the international attention generated, the hijacking did not significantly alter the course of the Biafran war or lead to a resolution of the conflict. 
Now, number four, the minting of the Biafran currency. During the Nigerian Civil War, Biafra declared independence and issued its own currency, the Biafran, uh, the Biafran pound. On the 29th of January, 1968, Biafra began minting its own one pound and five pound shillings, shilling notes in Portugal. These notes were made from paper and not too durable. Then, in February 1968, a second revolution of these minted notes were made in Switzerland, including a five pound shillings note, a 10 pound shillings note, a one pound note, a five pound note, and a 10 pound note. These notes were polymer made and more durable than the initial paper notes the Biafrans had made in 1968. Once the war concluded in 1970, however, these notes were discontinued. Number five, Omar Bongo Odimba. Omar Bongo Odimba was the president of Gabon from 1967 sorry, until his death in 2009, making him one of the longest serving leaders in the world. During the Biafran War, Omar Bongo played a significant humanitarian role by allowing the adoption of Biafran children who were flown to Gabon by foreign mercenary pilots from France and Netherlands in order to escape the conflict and its devastating effects. My grandmother is actually in this Zoom meeting, was one of the uh, seven girls, um, which comprised from two nurses and five Red Cross girls that had, been ta that had taken the children to Gabon by the planes. She recalls the Nigerian Air Force's attempts to shoot down the planes as frightening for all parties on the aircraft. Luckily, however, the Nigerian Air Forces seem to miss the planes. So, under Omar um, Bongo's leadership, Gabon provided a safe haven for these orphaned and displaced children from Biafra. Many of these children had lost their families and were in desperate need of care and support. Omar Bongo facilitated the adoption process and ensured that these children received proper care, education, and a chance for a better future in Gabon. Subsequently, one of the children Omar had adopted, named Ali Bongo Odimba, went on to become the next president of Gabon. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ben. Thank you.